rock. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good evening and welcome to Olympia Lanes here in Hammond, Indiana, Indiana Bowl TV's production of the PBA 50 South Shore Open. We've got another great step letter for you, and I've got my good buddy Tom Carter back to make the call here tonight. I'm Craig Elliott, and we're going to bring you a, a, a star-studded field, but not a lot of titles on this show, Tom. we got no audio. I have no audio. There, there we, we go. go. I can hear me now. Now we do. Okay. If there's only two titles on the yeah, show. That's unbelievable on this tour. And, you know, and we started out with Jason Couch, obviously a PBA Hall of Famer, USBC Hall of Famer. He's got tons of titles. He's got a PBA 50 title. But the only other title is the newest guy, John Janowitz, yeah. who won the Masters. The other three are still looking for their first title. And I really think we might see a first-time title tonight. I mean, Couch was my pick uh, before the tournament started. But he's got to run a step ladder. He's got a long way to go, a lot of work to get to that point. Well, you got Couch going into Ryan Schaefer. Now, Schaefer's been on the show several times. Right. Unfortunately, he hasn't won. He likes to say that uh, uh, the reason that Jason ha is, has the PBA Hall of Fame is because of him, because he, he, he beat we, him we four times. We had that times. discussion earlier. Actually, 6-0 and oh Jason is against, uh, <laughs> against Ryan in title matches. So tours. then we have Glenn Smith coming up, and he's got – he won – while well, he was on the show – in uh, 2021 in a, in a PBA 60 event. This is the first time in a PBA 50 event. Looking for his first title. He's got four regional titles. We go on to John Janowitz, who just won the Masters. N uh, obviously not scared of anybody. And Michael Haggett, who led the entire tournament, looking for his first. Well, and he absolutely crushed them today. Oh, he shot two 300s today. Uh, today. And he's been throwing the ball unbelievable. So, I mean, he's a pretty good pick to pick this for the win, I, I believe. Yeah. Well, and I'll give you an idea why why JJ can't win this week, and, and, and there's there's proof. He, <laughs> what kind well, of he's proof won, he's do won you two have? PBA 50 titles, and he won the Senior Masters. All three of those events, he shot 300. In. He has not shot 300 in this tournament, unless he does. Says, it. I'm going to say you can do it on the show, right? Unless he does it, then then he can sneak in there. So. Talking about JJ, I I, I wish, and we're, it's not going to get to that point, but we'll probably talk about it in the show, but. You talk about a guy that can do some tricks with a bowling ball. Oh, he's got them all. Watching him play seventh arrow over the gutter caps, literally 20 feet down the lane, about three feet past the arrows, 18 feet, hitting five on the left side, taking it out and striking like it was league. You know, by the way, he's throwing 16-pound equipment. That's what's there, even more amazing. That, yeah. So it sounds like we're just about ready to go. So let's take it out the lanes and watch the last couple of practice shots here. Ryan Schaefer is uh, out there with Jeff Johnson. Ball rep for the Brands of Brunswick. I love Jason Couch. He knows it. So we're going to have a good time tonight, everybody. First match, two PBA uh, tour titleists. And we've got some other special guests in the audience that I'd like to introduce to you that I don't know well, but hopefully you do. And, uh, so there's really John Weber's final announcement out. here to uh, the, the great time. crowd here in attendance. It's been pretty solid all week long. What? There is always, every time we come here, there is always a great crowd. The only bad thing about the crowd, the concourse is so small. They're having such a good time. You're, when you're on the lanes, I mean, the, the noise just carries right up there. And they get animated back here, too. Good. We like it. We love to see that. They've had, uh, actually, this, this, this should have been uh, 30 consecutive years this year. Of course, we missed a year due to COVID. Uh, PBA events and titles here in the center. But a very historic center. Tons of titles. On a regular tour, the 50 tour and the women's tour have been awarded in this building. Mike and Nick, Mike Cozy, the general manager, and Nick that owns the place, they are absolutely unbelievable. Nick comes out to the motorhomes to make sure that we have everything we need, power, water, the whole nine yards, making sure everything. He goes, you guys can stay as long as you need to. I, they treat us like heaven at, at, at this bowling center. She's the chief sports major officer. South, South Shore, where, there she is. Well, so we, you mentioned uh, Jason Couch, 2012 PBA Hall of Fame, 2013 USBC Hall of Fame, 16 national titles, three consecutive TOCs, uh, but only one title here on the 50 Tour, 27 regionals, and he was a 1992 PBA Rookie of the Year. That was a couple years ago. Well, yeah, what's that, 23 years ago? Oh, 22? Yeah, that's a little tough. 
unfortunately, <laughs> he's we're for, fortunate or unfortunate for him. He's bowling Ryan Schaefer. Th- Thirty-one Ryan. years ago, if you use new math. <laughs> oh, that's thirty-one. I said twenty, didn't I? Thirty years ago. See, that's how you're, I'm getting old. <laughs> but he's bowling Ryan Schaefer, and, and Schaefer, unfortunately, his record against Jason Couch hasn't been too good. Uh, not so stellar. So the interesting one for Schaefer, he's got five national titles, thirty-five regionals. You know, two Naggies, two TV three hundreds. Looking for his first fifty title. Tony Reyes Community Service Award winner. He's been on TV 56 times. That's a lot. That's but a just lot. a five time. You know, and Ryan's always in the conversation. We talk about some of the great players not in the Hall of Fame yet with a good chance with the new the new category this year that uh, there's a really good chance he'll get in um, with that. But Ryan has been a, a tough player, you know, for a long time out here on all these tours. So, well, Ryan, you know, it'd be great to see him get a title, but a lot of guys don't want to see it happen today. <laughs> well, there's just a... Just four other guys. He wants to see it happen. Yeah. But he's such a great guy. I mean, everybody thinks, you know, Ryan's demeanor's a little rough, but he's out here to bowl. But you get to talk to him off the lanes. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Oh, his sense of humor is, is unmatched. I mean, oh, they, it's unique. He, yeah, he thinks on a little different plane when it comes to the sense of humor. You, you think? Look at his jerseys. That'll tell They're you. They're awesome. Jersey of the day today. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the best jerseys out there. I love it. Jason looks like he just wants to get this thing going. I think so, yeah. Um, but it's good to see Jason back healthy, and he's had a pretty good start of the season so far, and a chance to potentially bowl for a title here today, but he's got to win several matches. And, again, a matchup against somebody he knows quite well here in Ryan Schaefer. Well, uh, take a look at uh, my last telecast, which was at Wayne Webb's. Walter Ray came in at fifth spot, walked the ladder all the way to a title. Yeah. Yeah, can Jason do the same? Like about 14 and a half to nine and a half, and knocks them all down. He had a little trouble kicking the seven pin out in his last match, and that's why he is here as the the golden ticket, the biggest loser, whatever term we want to use, is the highest seeded player to not win his last round. So right. he kind of gets here by default. He, well, um, Janowitz won his match, which allowed Jason to get in. You know, Jason's coming from a comeback too. He had knee surgery, so all right. Ryan throwing the new teal rhino. But the left lane to right lane, historically, one hooks a little bit more. And Ryan said he thought from 5 to 12, the right lane hooked more than the left in this house. And I, and for me, in qualifying, <laughs> I thought, and I, I didn't really have the specifics on the pairs. I just felt that the left lane hooked more. But he said it, it did in the rest of the house, just down here at this end. The right lane hooked. Well, for you in qualifying, we watched everything hooked. Well, when you can <laughs> only throw a 13 mile an hour, you know, 13 and a half, and I was trying to throw it as much as I could. But it, when you got guys having to play seventh arrow, and we don't see that that often. I mean, when no. I was fortunate enough to bowl a lot of world team challenges with some great players, and we were in front of the ball return, it wasn't that big a deal. But that was obviously a long time ago. Uh, now trying to do that again, and you don't really do it, especially on the senior tour. The, the seniors just don't break them down that way. But this pattern ended up playing quite a bit left. Yeah, we were actually watching you out there during during your qualifying. You had, uh, I think, you had JJ uh, on one side, you had Steve Klein on the other, and you were walking over a couple different times, watching what those two players were doing. Right. I and mean, what Steve Klein was doing was extremely impressive. Uh, I mean, he was standing what. On your approach. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was farther left than you were. He was, he, like he was standing approach. on five yeah. on my approach on the right lane to play his left lane. Yeah, on the, yeah, lane, yeah, lane six. It was <laughs> unbelievable. Absolutely. And I'm unbelievable. watching where JJ, I mean, the guys are standing on like 70, 65. Yeah, I can't count that. I... Schaefer starts with a spare and strike. Unlike earlier, these are just single games, our stepladder. One game, win in advance, lose, and you are done. And to this point, it was three game total pins to get to this point in the match play rounds. 
Boy, how about some of the series we saw today? We saw a 750, 760, 770, 80, 18. Yeah, Jason had 800. Just And uh, Campbell, he, he shot 800 at James Campbell, and Campbell shot 300 in the last game. And, and still lost. And still yeah. lost. And Jason almost did the same, almost would, could have had a chance to shoot 300 last game to get past Glenn Smith, but Glenn had shut him out before that. Jason finished with 297. Jason's got a classic style. I mean, if you remember the term of champions, the only thing that looks a little different is the steepness of his swing. I mean, he used to get it way up, right. down, yeah. and it was almost a check mark at the bottom and back up. Which tournament of champions? He won, yeah, you he won, won three, three times. Times. I don't pick one. Pick one. Not much about his game has changed. He's just they kind of lean back, bounce, and then go. And, and he's still throwing at 17 mile an hour. What is, you know, what is he throwing? What is, is that a purple hammer? Uh, well, he has three balls out there. He's got a bonus solid, a counterattack, and a purple hammer. And they're all purple. So it's. <laughs> yeah, good luck figuring that one out. That was definitely a purple ball. So you can't go wrong that way. Nope. Opening match here in our stepladder final. We've got Couch versus Schaefer. Glenn Morgan Smith waiting for the winner. John Janowitz is the two seed. And Michael Haggett, our tournament leader, will bowl for the title here today. Both players having trouble getting the seven pin up. It's just amazing how much friction bowling on the Mark Roth 42-foot pattern that we we were we seen this week. I and mean, I think it kind of got everybody caught off guard, especially when we started bowling going, are you sure we're bowling on the right well, pattern? Yeah, when you guys started practicing, there was a lot of, there was a lot of looks like, uh, wait a minute, was yeah. there oil on that machine? <laughs> yeah. But there was still a lot of bounce. We still saw guys, still, we saw gutter balls, we saw balls missed a foot and a half right at the pins. There right. was OB still. It depended on when you got it to that friction, whether or not it, it saw it or not. Well, one thing about the pattern that was kind of unique, the, even though it hooked so much, the, the real straight guys had a great shot to the pocket. The guys that hooked it, I mean, everybody really had a shot to the yeah. pocket. Straight or hooking it left or right. It was pretty amazing, really. It just We were just kind of caught off guard. They hooked so much. With your speed, you should have been out there. Uh, I might actually got the ball to hook. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'd probably be in traction now after what I saw you guys having to do to get the ball down lane. I think that's splitting the eight nine pretty good right there, and that's that's not the that's not the Rhino Pro on that lane. Was it, and he's no pretty often Ryan throws a different ball, um, you know, on each lane on a pair. That looked like it had some greenish or something to it. Troublemaker. Okay. Throwing the trouble. Uh, he's, he's been called that before. <laughs> I think earlier today, as a matter of fact. One thing Jason has more now when you see him at the foul line. Back in the day, it always looked like his his slide leg posting was just dead straight, and he was just locked up, knee straight. He's actually got a little bit of a knee bend now. Well, I think that's because of that knee surgery. That's <laughs> why he had that, because of the way they used to plant and put all that pressure on the front of that knee. Not too many guys on this tour have a knee bend anymore. So it's nice to be able to get a little bit back for Jason, obviously. And it gives more leverage, right? I mean, you get a little knee bend, you can get more leverage on the ball. Exactly. It allows your hand to do the right thing at the bottom of the swing. So he's bent down posting shots. I mean, that's kind of a new rebuilt Jason Couch that we're watching. Yeah. Great to see him healthy. His, his attitude is fantastic. I mean, I'm always really jovial and a good mood, but it, it, you feel a lot better when you're healthy. Yeah, look at that knee bend and look at that post and that shot. Hey, he stared that one down. Yeah. And that what was that, 17 at the arrows to 8 down lane? And one thing Jason does like to do, he can hook it. Schaefer to keep it within 10. Oh, oh a little love there. tab getting out the nine pin. 
You know, and, and that's why he was my choice. You know, and we were like in game one of day one on, on A squad, and I saw where the lefties were. It's like, well, yeah, Couch is going to be sitting back there just, just drooling. Drooling? Because he can, not not the, the, even hooking it, but he can be aggressive. He doesn't have to right. dial he, it back. Yeah, he, he didn't have to try go. to finesse it to get it there. And that's, you know, I mean, it's just his A game. He didn't lead, but he's been up. He was up towards the top the entire tournament. Michael Haggett decided today that <laughs> oh, he was going to lead, and there was nothing anybody was. Oh my God! Do about it's it. like he's averaging 260 all day long. Well, he averaged over 270 in the advances oh. around, and then comes out and shoots, you know, 290, 260 in his first two two games of the matches. Just just annihilated him. He uh, it was simple for him. I mean, he's just. It was re it was like watching the rerun of a movie. You, ju you knew all the words <laughs> to the movie. <laughs> You've seen this before. Just strike after strike after strike. And he, he did he did give you guys a little credit too for for that special little blue ball that he, that he punched up that that ocean vibe. Yeah. And man, that looked great. And that was thanks to uh, Jeff Johnson. Jeff uh, told him he probably ought to drill that because he might need it when they really get burnt. And he's always been using the purple ball, and it man did it come into play. Sure that, o that ocean vibe just scooted down the lane and gave him the look that he but needed. On, but on the fresh too, not just on the bird, right. on the right. fresh. Yeah. How about this shot for Jason. Got a heck of a match here in the in the opening step lighter. Well, a reoil. It's on the fresh, and the scores were always pretty high on the fresh. It all depends on as we get into the step ladder. How are they going to break down? How are they going to transition? We we were watching 11, 12 a lot during qualifying because we knew it was our our step ladder final, and it, I don't remember seeing a big difference between the two lanes. Like in in Vegas, we saw a huge difference between the left lane and right lane. Right. Uh, not so much in Greeley, but this week I, nothing stood out. Like hey, this one just hooks more, or this one doesn't. They seem to be pretty consistent. The scores on nine and ten, the past <laughs> step ladder <laughs> pair were. <coughs> Crazy this morning. I was just going to say that <laughs> Haggett shoots 300, Marcelo shoots 300, Tommy Hess shoots 248. He's 52 down yeah. in the first game. But the next game, you know, after that, we had uh, um, Dohan and Eugene McCune come in 278, 278 on the same pair. So <laughs> it was ridiculous the way that one started out. It'd be interesting to ask Mike Cozy do 9 and 10 score that well in league? So 129 in the fifth for Ryan Schaefer. Excuse me, for, for Jason Couch. And now 120 if Schaefer strikes. So Schaefer can take the lead here with that spare from Couch. Still has 270 left. And there, the scores, and I, I think the over-under on all these matches are going to be pretty close to 480 to 500. I, I think so. You know, in qualifying, we were looking at the scores. All right, well, he's pacing 190. He's pacing 210. Today, we're saying max score 250 because a lot of people were throwing a ton of strings today that we didn't see in qualifying. And that's got to be, what, another 7 pin? Yeah. Week 7. What did you see on that, Tom? For, I, it, just, it looked like he got a little farther right down the lane and it looked like the ball just burned a little bit and didn't quite want to make the turn on the back end. And that was... And that was kind of surprising, too, because a lot of the light hits in this house carried way better than some of the flush hits, I thought. And But it just you seen that ball get down the marker and just kind of labored going through the pins. Is that going to get oh. there? Okay. Woo! <laughs> that, that made me a little nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you, you couldn't see. He was kind of right in our camera. You're like, and he was... Kind of worried, looking like that might not make it. So a 10-pin differential right now through seven. And some of our camera angles are a bit skewed. This is a low ceiling center. And, uh, you know, the score, the new scoring they put in, the scoreboards are down there. So it's tough to get some of our, our big overheads that we've seen before to get above the players. Well, so everything's just a little bit tighter here than normal. I thought we were going to have a little bit of a problem when uh, the tournament started and then the lights went out. <laughs> Yeah, that was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we just get things moving, and there goes the power. Who didn't pay the bill? All right, Schaefer mixes them up there. That was a little scary. We had kind of reminiscent of Wayne Webb's place last, last year. year yeah. the we lost it for, what, a whole day. Two days in a row it happened. Yeah. Oh, that remember, storm went through. That. Yeah. 
Schaefer shooting a possible 249 if he can shoot it. Jason Couch, 269, did I see 259. that? 259. 259. Yeah, up, up 10. Like I said, the, the, the camera angles, it, when you see the, the scores, are a little blurred. Yeah, the at least lights, from yeah, our it, point no, of view. It, yeah, it's tough to see the lights shining oh. on it. Oh, the, the angles. And, and look at that. Dancing. the ceiling fan. How about this pin action? Yeah. That head pin went that way and back across, and I think it might have wanted to try to... Go back again. but So let's talk pin action. Did you see any of John Vermich's shots this week? My goodness, did he just obliterate some racks. Oh, is he throwing it 18-9? He just turned 50, like right before the tournament. I think he was on lane 17 and threw a strike. And we're sitting here back in the corner, 10 lanes away with headset on. And I was like, man, that was loud. <laughs> yeah, he was blasting. That guy can throw it. And he was a crowd favorite. Everybody oh, yeah. was rooting him on. He only lives about a half hour away or so. Great to see some fresh faces in our top 16 this week. And, of course, a couple of uh -oh. here on the show. Uh -oh. Whoa. Oh, he got all of that one, didn't he? Either he got all of that or. Well, he was like 14 and a half to 9 and a half the first shot. Oh, that was. Oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah, was that clear was out to like that, four. That was left and left her. What's it's that hand? That Hall of Fame I, hand right there. You got yeah, a, you got a mitt full. He caught all of it because he looked like he might have stuck a little bit, but he grabbed it and it made it back. That could have been really ugly. Schaefer's got some of the neatest jerseys. I don't know where he thinks this stuff up. <laughs> and, a, and a curtsy. <laughs> He's got a monkey on the front and a donkey on the back. Oh, there's a lot of symbolism in his jerseys, yeah. <laughs> He had the strong man jersey yesterday. <laughs> so this is obviously just coming down to the tenth. Yeah, got to win the tenth frame. I mean, Schaefer can strike out and, and uh, definitely force Couch to get up and do something here in the tenth to, to try to win this one and, and take on Glenn Morgan Smith in our second match. Yeah. When Glenn comes up, you're going to see a totally different style and execution compared to what's going on right now. And, and, you know, I know there was a lot of joking earlier and through the years with, with Couch and Schaefer. You know, Schaefer says several times, hey, I helped put Couch in the Hall of Fame game there quicker because he is, Couch is 6-0 against him in title matches on TV. But he wants to beat him. <laughs> I mean, there, there's, you know, there's no not reason. Not that Ryan's got a chip on his shoulder, but he knows the record against, against Couch. And it, it he wants to get the W against him. Well, and rightly so. Ryan deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He deserves to win. He just get unfortunately the poor guy gets some bad breaks at the wrong time. Fifty six TV shows though. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And you see only five titles. A lot of people yeah. love to have five titles, but not but, when you've been on TV fifty six times. Well, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So ten percent of the time. When and he's and on how, the show, and he how wins. many second places in majors on top of that? Oh, I'm right? sure that he's what, six probably or seven. I think at least. At least. Well, he's in the two forties. Well, Jason obviously so, definitely so, needs well, the first one. Yeah, count here is big though. I mean, if he gets nine, we we there's a potential tie. So a strike here to get two forty nine is going to force a double. If he only gets nine, then then you know, strike nine spare would be a tie. We have the possibility. Uh, he, he needs a strike here. Jason is so deliberate with his approach. And it looks like he just comes out of his shoes all the time when he gets to the foul line. But it works. Nice ball game. 249. And again, that was a big shot. So now that forces Jason Couch to double. And he's crossing like with 17, 18, out to eight. Throwing two different balls. I mean, it's amazing how the greats out here see the lane totally different than the rest of the field. <laughs> I, th I think for, for Schaefer, he, he does that more than anybody on these tours. Um, you know, throws two different balls. All right, Couch needs the first two. People are standing up. He stared that one down. Looks like it might have gone just a touch high. 
Where's this one? Can we see where this one goes past the rangefinder? Well. It looked like he was about 13 out oh, yeah, to like five. One. Yeah, he got that one out a little bit. So That did look high. That could have left something ugly. The old 6-8 would not be what he would be wanting to look for. Jason taking a little extra time on this shot. Got to have it. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, it looked that, like he missed that one. He missed that yeah. at the bottom. It just it, a little extra time on the approach, too, it looked like. I mean, it, that, it didn't he, have the nine. He seven, knew he but, missed that yeah. one. He still got it out to like 5-6, but it just wasn't there. So Ryan Schaefer, for once, has beaten Jason <laughs> Couch <did> to, <laughs> to go on. Great opening match, everybody. Congratulations for both players. Have a nice hand for Jason Couch, everybody. Ryan Schaefer to 249. One step closer for looking for his first PBA 50 title. He's just got a few people to go through yet. Well, he's he's get the uh, the number six seed in qualifying, Glenn Morgan Smith, and Glenn has uh, he's been uh, he's been on a step ladder before, Super Senior Classic. Uh, we're looking for his first PBA 50 title, and this is his, his first telecast out here to try to bowl for a title. He, he does have four PBA 50 regionals, three last year. And he, he actually won Player of the Year in two regions, 2021 in the South and 2022 in the Southwest uh, Player of the Year for the 50 side of things. So he, he's had a good couple of years, uh, but just hasn't broke through here at this level. And, you know, he, he wants to win. Everybody wants to win, but for Glenn, the last couple of years he's had, he knows – Look, this is his time, right? You only have so much time. You, exactly. You yeah. only have so much time out here. Unfortunately, it is the senior tour, and our longevity out here isn't like the kids' tour when they can start out at 18 or 19 when they come out, and they can bowl clear up to the – successfully in their mid-40s. Well, even. and he's in his 60s. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, the clock for him is even, is even you know, He is shorter. a super senior. Yep. Oldest guy in the field. But he wasn't showing that the last couple of days. No. It today. And, I mean, and Glenn can throw it hard. I, I kind of give him a nickname after he bowled next to me at the Masters. He, he was getting a little frustrated, and the ball was averaging 22 mile an hour every shot going down the lane. Nice. So I go, I like hey, 22, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, you know, and he earned his spot here. There, there's no doubt about it with the way he bowled this week. But today, in his first match, he beats Walter A. Williams, Jr. Not bad. Match two. That guy's got a few titles. Jason Coach. Still got a few so titles. So he's not going to be intimidated by anybody going up against now. I mean, he beat two of the best to ever lace him up already today. So who's next? Give me Ryan Schaefer. I got him. You know? I, I don't think if you ever really talk to Glenn, I don't think that he's scared of anybody. It's just his demeanor and the way he is. He, he comes out here, and he's got a job to do, and you can see that he's always just dead focused. Now, how it works out, bowling on the fresh again, and he's playing a different part of the lane than Schaefer. So he, where he's playing is really fresh. Right. Other than the practice shots he's had before the show started and the shots he gets right now. So with his angles that he's playing, though, I mean, having to cross Ryan's line down lane, is that going to affect his what? his carry at all? Well, I think what's going to affect Glenn more than anything in is the adrenaline in this match that he has the ability to throw it so hard that he doesn't throw it through the break point. Right. He has thrown a couple different balls today. He threw the duel for a while and maybe a reality or something. Is that the other one? Glenn's got an infinite physics, uh, a reality check, a phase two, uh, and he's got a couple others, but he thought those three were going to be the ones that are going to come in to play for him. Okay. He was second on the show in the Super Senior Classic uh, in 2021. Yeah, lost lost to Ron Moore, which a lot of people have done. A lot of people have lost to Ron Moore in PBA 60 events. And, and now he's throwing a duo. Yeah, we saw him throw the duo a little bit earlier, too. 
It all depends on, again, adrenaline and, and when the lights come on and they say it's go time, what happens? Well, and, and, you know, this is his this is his first his first uh, situation. I mean, yes, he's won regionals. He's been in step lighters, but look, there's lights, there's cameras, there's lots of fans. This is well, this is for a banner. It's it's a little different. Well, last year we had a guy win his first title for his banner, John Burkett. Right, right here in this building. Yep. So, you know, we got Glenn and Michael Haggett and Ryan Schaefer. We still have three people looking for their first title. See another shot or two, it looks like. He's down there with Michael <coughs> Haugen, Jr., Michael talking to him. He's just trying to keep him calm. I mean, what's the worst thing you can do in this in this situation? Right? Just overthink it, right? Uh, I mean. Yeah, just overthink it. Uh, try to place the ball. Try to fit it instead of just roll it off your hand. Uh, let the ball read the lane so it can give you a actual reading of what the ball's doing going down the lane. He, again, I, he has the ability to overthrow it and not let the ball read. So I think for Glenn, it's going to be an adrenaline factor. A lot of, a lot of conversation going on down there between these two. It's funny, you're going to see all these guys hook the ball. And then we got Glenn, which is going to be the straightest player, but the firmest player out here. So it's just, you know, all the styles I said earlier had a chance have, uh, to make it to the show because you everybody could play on this pattern this week. Well, I think the interesting thing for for John Janowitz, who's going to be in our semifinal match against the winner of this one, where he's playing lane is going to depend on who he's going against. I mean, he's going to get inside of whoever he's balling. If he gets Schaefer, he could be lofted in the gun. That's true. And if you watch Janowitz, it, we might be able to see it on camera, but he takes notes every shot so of what the ball's doing, where he's playing. And what goes through John Janowitz's mind is amazing if you get to talk to him about how he reads a lane. Well, see, he can take notes because he, he actually hits his mark the same every time where if I take notes, well, I, I, I kind of hit here and it did this. but Well, if yeah. I hit 17, I got to throw it this hard. And if I hit 13, I got to throw yeah, it this if, hard. If is the big, the big word there. All right, here we go. Ryan Schaefer going to start things out. Ryan still at 18. Date with that troublemaker. It looks like... Ryan's style that he hits up on the ball, but it's off of his hand into the lane before that ever happens. Right. Not all just comes with good timing. So Glenn Morgan Smith going with a duo. It looks like he hit like 12, taking it to seven down lane. I mean, that's look, kind of the epitome of down and in player. Yeah, that looked pretty good right there. One more shot. How about this? He's, so it is, yeah, 11, 12 to 8 ish. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I've seen. I like it. I think when people look at a ball go over a target, they see the, the entire ball, not the center of the ball, actually right. <laughs> go over the target. So they go, no, I hit my target. One, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, which, which target? <laughs> That was in. That, that was in a little bit. And kind of hit the little shim and, and a little half uh, ten action. Amazingly enough, Glenn is, and there's nothing wrong with it, is the only player you're going to see with a wrist brace on for a little support because he has a weaker wrist. And <clears throat> as we get older, there's nothing wrong with wearing a brace. Some people say, well, I don't want to wear one, you know. Man, if you need one to help you make your shots, put it on. I know on the kids' tour they're not allowed to wear a brace, but this ain't the kids' tour. Yeah, we do it out here. So he missed a 10-pin in his match earlier against Walter, and then what did he do after that? Just throw like 16 in the next 18. <laughs> so you saw him take a deep breath before he shot that one. You know, he was thinking about that missed 10-pin earlier, but took care of that one no problem. There's a, a point. Should you even be thinking about that one you missed three games ago? 
Well, should you? No. No, but do you? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was... That's a, a footwork bad break there. Either he stuck or he slid. I don't know which one it, it was, but the footwork was... It kind of yeah, looked like he, he just stuck. Dead stuck. Yeah, yeah, he did was, stopped. He doesn't slide a lot, but there was nothing there. Glue. Well, that's kind of interesting. I don't know why all of a sudden that come into play. I seen. I'm surprised there was a seven ten picked up because I seen pins get bounced out like crazy this week. I mean, halfway up the lane. And Verbeach, as hard as he throws it, he was throwing shrapnel. We saw a split attempt for, I think it was Tom Hess yesterday, shooting the uh, the 4 7 10. What made the big four? The four pin comes out in front of the 10, doesn't touch it, comes out six foot on the lane. So not only did he not get the spare, he had to take care of Deadwood. <laughs> He's thinking about that. I mean, that looked the same. It looked like it was 18 to 8. Just didn't carry. I and mean, the lanes are going to change. And that's something that happened this week. The lanes changed pretty rapidly. I was crossing with Ron Moore, and he goes, I got to figure it out. Every five frames, move again. <laughs> A little bit of frustration there. You can see that he's kind of shaking his head, wondering what the heck happened leaving that 10 pin. Glenn is in deep thought. He, he is. I like it. I mean, we see it so many times. Guys get on their first show, and it's over before they even know what happened. He's conscious of that, and he's taking his time. I, 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 like, I like to see that. I think that's very important. That would look like a replay of the first shot we've seen on that lane. 12 out to like 8. And see, that wasn't high flush. It was just almost half pocket. And that was great carry in the yeah. center. One of the ones I remember the most years ago when Noel Vasquez won up in Brentwood. Remember when he beat Pete for the title. That, that step out of final took like 7 minutes. I mean, no, I, mean, I couldn't even switch camera angles. He was going so fast. Uh, so to see Glenn just slow things down is very, very important. That looked a little, well, it, at the angle we have, looked a little farther right. At well, the, the last one, remember, he got the last one in just a touch, right, in the flat 10. Right. And this one he got, made the adjustment, got out a little bit, but then it comes up too much in four pins. So somewhere in between those two. So now we're talking about. Half boards. Yeah. Or, or, I mean, ball chains. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 10-pin, 4-pin racks, and that's, not, that's never the reaction the bowler's looking for, right? No. Oh, that looked a little bit right there, I mean, from my angle <laughs> off his hand. I thought, oh, don't be missing a 4-pin now. Ryan sticking with the... Teal Rhino on that right lane. Another ten. Yep. Now this is the quandary here. Where do you do you feel like? The lane's burning up a little bit. And you, you got choices. You can move a little farther left, try to catch some more oil. Or do I change balls? Well, no, I know. mean, now Glenn, Glenn's throwing, what, six shots in each lane? And it's kind of at Ryan's break point. Is that affecting the motion for Ryan? Well, Maybe a little. I mean, you mentioned how they, how they change so fast. Well, they do change fast. It, it just, you know, the, when you leave 10 pins, and there's, you know, there's always a school of thought, well, i got to move right. 
he stuck again. Uh, but then on the conditions we bowl on, the, the lane dries up so fast there, the ball could actually be burning up and losing energy not to take out the 10. So do I move right? Do I move left? You know, or do I change balls? Right. Yes. <laughs> yes of all, all the above. Of the Thank above. you. You see that uh, device on Ryan's hip. Uh, Ryan has diabetes. Okay. He, and he always has to monitor himself. You know, and he fights through, you know, all kinds of things to, to be out here and bowl and does such a wonderful job of it. That's, that's a quality shot right there. Yep. So we talk about that a lot, how important it is in, in these seven and eight game qualifying blocks for all the players to stay hydrated and, you know, snack bars, bananas, things like that. So it's more important for Ryan to do that, I'm guessing, just to keep yes. keep his sugar levels proper. When would look, just a touch of loft on that one, it looked like. That almost looked like it was going down the lane a little quicker. You see the big breath and his shoulders just relax. And then he started. Perfect. Oh, yeah, he got that pass the dots. Yeah, he, he, he had a little 22 come into play on that one. He had a little extra on that. You know, one thing I don't think, and I've bowled next to Glenn and been around him a lot out here, I have never seen him fall off a shot ever. I think it's, I mean, you mentioned he's got the ball speed, but there's there's no force. To it. He's not pulling it down. He's not no not a high backswing. It's very smooth. And it's just it, it's got to be in the legs. I, you know. And speaking of that, I I talked to Kevin McCune uh, this week, and I go, how in the heck do you throw the ball 24 mile an hour? Genetics. And he goes, it's all in my legs, because I bowled to Peterson, and. Uh, we were keeping track of ball speeds for whatever reason. So, you know, the Peterson's eight games, right? That looked a little farther left. Oh, Got to get there. And still just not making the turn. So, eight games at the Peterson. His average, he averaged 29.4 for eight games. How do you throw the ball that hard? And, and, he goes, and get out of bed the next day. <laughs> and he goes, it's just, it's all in my legs. Well, I mean, he was a baseball player. Was he a pitcher or what? You know, he, he's, he's used to using his legs, very athletic. And genetics. I mean, it, yeah, genetics. Know. Dad doesn't throw it too slow either. So Ryan's got to figure out something on the right lane. Either he needs to change, or he might have moved in a little bit, tried to pick up a little oil, but it still didn't get out that 10. You can't let Glenn get too far ahead. Yeah, that's been the key for all the Glenn's matches. Is he gets the leads early and just hangs on. You know, he just isn't letting players, you know, come after him at all. So we haven't really have to seen him bowl under pressure in any of the matches today to see how he handles it. Troublemaker's doing a thing on the left lane. He might yeah. want to. Uh, <laughs> so I was just going to ask you, are you going to throw that on the right lane? No, it's, I mean, it's, it's just making that move just a little bit more aggressive, right? Yeah, and it's much much cleaner when it does that. You can see it keep traveling to the left. I, I would think that uh, he might switch balls, at least I hope. Unless, but, you know, he's out there, we're sitting here. Unless he sees something different. I don't know. I think we're both seeing the same thing here. <laughs> But again, you know, like I said, he's throwing the ball. That was farther right. That was almost, I'm going to say, ten and a half uh, there. And yeah, then, that was that was a guaranteed ten pin off his hand the way he let that one go. Got another well, nice little mask going on here. Well, you know, we're getting closer to the end, and the squeeze factor might come into play. Winner of this match goes on to meet John Janowitz. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, th- so think about that. We already, we already told uh, our viewers. That, so Glenn's taken out Walter Ray, Jason Couch. And then, now, you know, if, if he gets by Ryan Schaefer, guess what? Now you get John Janowitz. Like, you know, hello. Hi. <laughs> just trying to win a title here, <laughs> you know. Can, yeah. can everybody just kind of get out of my way for a little bit? You can hear a pin drop in this place. Holy cow. Much better shot. Well, and you mentioned all the fans, but, you know, very well-educated fans, too, is, is there being very respectful, being nice and quiet, and uh, not making noise until it's, it's, it's time to make any noise. So the players definitely appreciate it. Because, like you said, Tom, you can hear, well, you can hear a I, lot of noise I, through this whole center. I mean, we're not that far away from the players. I'm almost scared to talk if when they're up if they, they can hear us, you know. Yeah. Oh, he got a mitt fall of that one. Oh, he, he, he caught every bit of that. He might have hit that one on the upswing a little bit. Boy, he grabbed a yeah. handful. He just, because it looks like, well, we can't tell if he made a move, but it still got out to eight. But when that ball decided to change direction, it yeah. never stopped. That, that, that made the motion he's looking for. Two twenty seven max for Ryan Schaefer, two thirty nine the max for Glenn Morgan Smith. Oh, that's looked like it was gonna be a little high. He didn't quite get it out to eight. Well, he's keeping the pressure on him. I mean Glenn, Glenn's got the lead, but he's 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 uh, he's got Ryan right on his heels. He can't light up. So we got a twelve pin match here. Yeah. I mean, all the shots are huge, and we always tend to say that this next shot's huge, but this one is. <laughs> that release, it looked more like he pointed it at the pocket yeah, instead of didn't let go- it go. he didn't let it go. And that's the trouble you're going to get in. You know, I think it almost looked like he tried to stuff that one. Well, you know, there's got to be some nerves at some point here for Glenn. I mean, you know, and he's getting up, you know, ninth to tenth frame, he's got a chance to win the match. Not a horrible shot. Leaves a nine pin. Uh, you need to make it and then get up and throw a couple in the tenth and, and make Ryan perform. And Ryan's going to have to strike on that right lane, which hasn't been his good lane today. So he's got a possible 219 if he strikes all the way out. So it forces Ryan to throw the first one anyway. Yeah, yeah, a double here is going to force Ryan to at least get the first one. So that's 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 a big deal. That was a better shot. Oh. Wow. Did you? <laughs> you just black hat. I got, I got nothing. I got that nothing. was no, that pure. was that was that was really really good off his hand. That yeah. Now possible two oh eight, that changes things. But man, was that a great shot. Well, no, he can still see a see a see this guy strike, nine spare. Yeah, two oh six strike is, is or nine spare strike is two oh six for Schaefer. So he's got to make this. Ryan still got to get the first hit. I think. Let's double check that math. That has got to be, I mean, it's happened to a lot of players. We've seen it over the years on TV. Uh, a solid eight right when you needed it. That's a Randy Peterson thing there. <laughs> yeah, the Randy special. Yeah, that was a Randy uh, special. So nine spare strike is 206 for Schaefer. So, yeah, he, he's going to have to strike still. Well, so, I Glenn mean, needs know, good count good, on yeah, this. Yeah, good count here. I mean, you, you got he's not going to get less than nine, right? He hasn't done that in, in, in a couple of days, it doesn't seem like <laughs> Okay, so yep. it's got to have the first one. And again, on the lane that he just struck on, he's been leaving 10 pins on it. 
Let's see if he is he gonna get a handful of this one as well. Is that is that the key for him? He was gonna have he to really hit it. I well, I don't think he can get soft with it. And whatever he did, whatever his adjustment was, and it was minute from our angle. But yeah, do that again. Yeah, he's got to repeat. Good look over his right shoulder. That jersey's so awesome. <laughs> He's at 20. He's at 10. First right. hit. He did move right. in a little bit. Yep. Picked up a little bit more oil. Kept that one a little bit tighter. That pretty much it does it. Ryan Schaefer crawling up the ladder slowly but surely. Yeah, that, that's it. 207. Oh, sorry, I had yeah. 208. 207. But Ryan's got his hands full with this next match. Uh, yes, he does. Yes, that's, he does. It's going to be kind of unique because John Janowitz, like you said earlier, could probably be farther left. On oh, I think he's, yeah, he's going to be. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind he's going to be. Well, well look, the, the positives for me in this match for Glenn, Glenn Morgan Smith is that Look, he got nine every time. He was all over the pocket, made some good shots. One suspect shot maybe in that game, you know, the, the one that got in and, and nine pinned. You know, he just, you know, like he, he just kind of had to jam it in there. He may be a little nervous there in the. In the but what it, what he's got now is, frame, is, is he's got confidence that he 100%. can get there. You yeah. Know, you know. Yeah, you beat two Hall of Famers and you had a chance to win the match. I mean, that's that's what you that's what you want, right? Look, nobody's going to walk out of here being happy they lost, but there's a lot of positives that Glenn Morgan's been taking from, take from like, this week. You know, we always talk about it. You know, you, you learn to qualify first, then you learn to make match play, then you start making the show, and you got to learn how to win. But the key is you got to get to the show. If you never get to the show, you never have a chance to win. Right. And I believe now that just is one more feather in his hat. He's got more confidence in, in – Next week at the World Series in Jackson, Michigan, could be a whole new mindset for him. Well, and there's a short pattern there too, the Ballard, which you know, with his with his aggressiveness and speed, you know, he might uh, he might really like that. So Haggett is the uh, the tournament leader. He'll get a couple of shots here on this championship pair before the semifinal match starts. As of course John Janowitz will get his warm up practice on this pair as well. So Schaefer does not get any shots but if i'm him i, I got to keep an eye on, on what jj's doing why well, yeah you got to pay it you can't worry about what haggett's doing you got to no. worry about what this guy's but, doing but this this is going to be a chess game here in this match between these two players i would love somehow to be inside janowitz's mind because the way he processes lane breakdown ball choices and reads What's going to happen is just totally amazing. I'm not sure I could comprehend what's going on in his mind. Sometimes he, he, he's he was extremely analytical, I think is maybe yeah. a good term. He was yeah. talking to Chris Keene and myself last when he won the Masters. And since I'd done the show, I was asking him, you know, you were throwing one ball but striking like crazy. And then when the show started, you never even threw that ball. And he yeah, went we, through. Yeah, we were. I remember that. Yeah, we were. We were. Remember shocked that? Yeah. Like, what? What is he doing? You know. And he went through a whole. I wish I'd had it taped. I'd, I'd play it. Of RG's differentials, the way the oil plays, yeah. uh, just all kinds of things. And I, Chris and I were looking at each other, going, "What did he just say?" Because <laughs> he, <laughs> right. he lost us in like the second. Do you, do you speak English, John? <laughs> English. <laughs> Yeah, and I, you know, I remember that we, we we took some flack for for kind of second guessing him, but look, I mean, we we watched him practice like, well, that ball looks great. Oh, that yeah. And then never saw it again. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? And then not that. Remember, he also picked a finish on the left lane, right? Which it, it, really, really threw us yeah, for a loop. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. But again, you know, the, the, this pair here, there's really no difference now. It's just comfort. Oh, you want to you want to finish, or do you you know do you want to start? He's at fifth arrow. 
Oh, yeah, not surprised at all. He's going to be inside of Schaefer. He's five boards 100%. left to Schaefer yeah. right now. I know they're not going to get that ugly, but it would be nice maybe on his fill shot if he – just show the people the seventh arrow shot that you were doing. Uh, I, I think you might see it. I really do. Because he was, uh, this morning, I think game two, game three advances around, he was in loft a little bit just to get inside everybody and just have a, a clean path to the pocket. So we got Schaefer, John Janowitz, and Michael Haggett. Who's your pick? It, it, it's <laughs> tough. I mean, Haggett is bowling so good, but he has not been in this position before to, to win on the national tour. Uh -oh, the, Wonder the, Woman the, sighting. Vegas favorite, I got to believe Janowitz would be the favorite. And I got to believe probably Schaefer a second and Haggett would be third. So Haggett, you know, even the one seed, I think Vegas line would probably have him as a long shot just from experience. Well, you know. everybody out there watching, what do you think? Sure, it doesn't matter what we think. We got almost half the field thinks JJ or half our viewers think JJ and 18% for Haggett and 32. Yeah, there you go. See, that's what I said. 49% for JJ? Yeah. But Michael's only got to win one game. That, that's it. Well, that's that's the key. He, he doesn't have to climb any ladders. He's just got to keep it together. And there's only been one other lefty. Right. A lot less side. traffic over there. A lot less traffic. So, and Michael is kind of the player, if he's got a shot, he's not going to take too many practice shots to burn up his shot. You know, yeah. He's like, yeah, we've seen that before. There was yeah. one. He didn't take any practice one time. Yeah, he, what was that? If I he thinks I remember he, that. Yeah, if he thinks he has got a shot, he's done practicing. Yeah, was was it Grand Rapids last year or Jackson last year that, where he made the show? Right? You know, like I don't think he took any practice shots, or maybe one. It's like All right, I'm good. Let's go. J.J. was just at 27 on that shot. Holy. We might see seventh arrow. <laughs> I'm telling you. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, Schaefer, 249, 246, winner game one over Jason Couch. 215, 207 over Glenn Morgan Smith. Uh, I don't think 215 is going to win this one. I, I don't think so either. J.J. is migrating in front of the ball return. Yep. And this is where you normally don't see seniors play. But being a Team USA member, he knows how to get left. He knows how to play the entire lane. So, folks, don't be surprised if you see – some amazing things on the show. Ten-time Team USA member, and he made the team this year and almost won the USAM this year as well at, you know, 50 years old. So there is some good news for you, for you guys. I don't, You probably don't know this one, Tom. You know, J.J. did announce this week he's going to bowl the entire tour, but he's not going to be able to bowl the Villages because he's got to go to Team USA camp, you know. But he will be at the Tournament of Champions. Oh, yeah, he'll be there which is our final stop. So John Janowitz, two PBA 50 regionals. He's only bowled two. He's won them both. <laughs> 2023 USBC Senior Masters, his first event as a senior on the national tour, and he wins that. And he's probably the only player. I don't know. If we, we might have another one. Okay, ladies, Throwing 16-pound stuff. Uh, Who else is throwing 16-pound? Hogan? John Michael, maybe, maybe, Michael maybe, did, maybe he bounces maybe. around. Maybe. This is his first year as a PBA member ever. And uh, I do believe that uh, Janowitz will take over the lead now and uh, player of the year points because Troy Lintz did not. Depends on how the points fall here and where they finish, but he didn't. He didn't make it to the step ladder. He got knocked out the first round. All right, this morning to match play. Just because Walter Ray Williams shot 777 against him. <laughs> On, on, and, you know, I joke, I joke with Troy after that. I said, at what point in game one did you realize that you lost? <laughs> Frame three. I mean, the look Walter had this morning was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. He's, he's used the same ball, the same ball, yeah. for two tournaments. Hasn't switched. Same ball. I might stick with that. 
All right, Schaefer's going to start this semifinal match against John Janowitz. That was way yeah, inside. Not a good shot at all. So, I, I'm guessing he just didn't get the projection and he missed that because I can't believe that John tore up the lane already in there. No, it was just a, that was just a miss. That, that was just miss. a yeah. miss. And, and maybe the five-minute break just didn't have the, the speed. I, you know, people lock up after a few minutes. Yeah, I, I don't know if he went over the practice pair and threw a couple shots. I wasn't watching that or not. Yeah, I didn't I'm, I'm sure he must have thrown one or two. Well, I was watching the monitor, and I didn't see any pins go down. Oh, that was a good attempt. I guess if you're going to have a mistake, which you don't want, the first frame is the best place to do it. Get it over with. <clears throat> Now, this is a pretty unique setup. He does the same thing all the time, holds the ball to his side, angles his shoulders, gets set. Ooh, a little four a little love get tap there. there. A little break. I, li I like his hand. You can always see that open hand. Watch, watch his follow through and where, where that hand is. Yeah. Yeah, John doesn't use any grips, and his finger holes are razor sharp. But one thing is kind of unique that you don't see a whole lot of people do, but John does it. On his follow-through, his arm just, like, never really extends. It, the elbow is always bent. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see that very often. Well, you got to be really strong to pull that off, too, right? Well, you got to be. But, I mean, if the match goes between him and, and Haggett, Haggett's, like, three times his size. Well, Haggett's. The biggest guy in the building. <laughs> I mean, he, he's he's all of six four plus, and hasn't missed dinner in a while. I mean, John has no problem throwing that sixteen. You wouldn't think it was sixteen pounds. He's like EJ Tacka. Tacka throws sixteen pounds, also, I believe. Um, uh, you know, I'm not sure about that anymore. There's there's not many he, people. He was at one point, but still, I mean, Missy Parkin still throws sixteen. JJ's well, best friend. Those people aren't very big. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Ryan is into 22, 23 at the Arrows. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. I mean, what, what do you think about that? With that ball, is that, I, is that I, too deep? I I believe it is, just because it's a solid. Uh, there's surface to it. Uh, I would think you might want to go to that troublemaker the other ball is using. Janowitz has got a couple balls down there. He's got a UC2. He's got a, a Black Widow 2.0 and an Infinite Physics. So, unfortunately, with the camera and the shadows, it's tough to tell which ball he's actually throwing. I went down there and I looked and, you know, people are talking about layouts and all the layouts uh, of the balls. I mean, if you wanted numbers, you'd have to know their axis. But uh, for a, a pro shop term, it's all pin above the ring fingers. You know, CG kicked out a little bit. Nothing fancy. But then again, I, I, I don't know if there's a fancy layout. There's a fancy release, but I don't know if there's a fancy layout. Yeah, I think he gets the ball to do whatever he wants with all the different hand positions and tricks that he's got that he's developed through all these years. Oh, he was walking that out and just Rightly so. slammed a seven pin. Oh, my God. But, again, like we were talking, look at the motion of this ball off the end of the pattern. It's going right to left. Yep. It, it never stops. The, unfortunately, the green ball isn't doing that unless he grabs a whole handful.
Yep. Well, you don't want to give John Janowitz a two-strike head start. I, I know that. No. no, not at all. I guarantee you, John is where his feet are at are within millimeters <laughs> of where they were last uh, time. He's getting familiar with that ball return, too. The key is getting it out to 7-8 down lane. But so the trips a four and then gets a late kick on the nine. Back-to-back -back shots on lane 12. What is amazing, the angle that he's got. He hit like 27, I mean, a straight line to eight, and the ball just ricochets off of that back through the pins. And it doesn't look like, I mean, if we could really had slow motion on his wrist, it doesn't look like he does a lot of wrist tricks. He just goes through the shot. He, I mean, he's just so firm with the wrist, though. I mean, there's there's no uh, there's no break breakdown on the wrist there. He's just so strong. So something I'd like to see here, I think, from Schaefer. We saw we saw JJ up there, ready the bowl as soon as Schaefer got off the approach. Ryan needs to take control of this match. Maybe get up there, take a rewrap, just slow things down because JJ's ready to go. He's got a four bagger. Let's go. Take control of the pace. There you go. Yeah, come back. Get your eyes and bag. He, he kind of needs to try to throw JJ off of his rhythm. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, just I'd like to see re rack before this next shot on lane eleven, just just to slow things down. Because watch, you'll you'll see Janowitz, you know, right up on the, on the ball return almost instantly when Schaefer lets go of the ball. Ryan sticking with the Rhino Pro. Yeah, see that ball just didn't go through the pins. That steamrolled the nine. You want to text him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Ryan, change balls. Can you send I, some Morse code through through his, to, his to little you. hip device there? And the he, he just. And what's. And he, he, I don't think he has a choice. If he doesn't strike this next frame, he's going to be 60 down in a heartbeat. Ooh. <laughs> he's looking at equipment. Well, I, I, I don't... I'm not sure when the last time he really missed on lane 11 was. That ball looks looks pretty solid. You know, he, he can stay aggressive with it, gets it rolling, it goes through the pins great. But, you know, it's you know, the right lane that he's just questioning what's well, going on. Yeah, well, he didn't get the memo to do the re-rack. That is not a good thing. But when you watch JJ's ball at the break point, change direction, it's, yeah, I would say, pretty violent. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's changing direction hard. See, JJ's already up. That's, he's, he's pushing his pace. The show would go pretty quick if we had five JJs on the show. <laughs> it definitely would. <laughs> you wouldn't have thought, at least I wouldn't have thought, on a fresh pair just doing the show that this would happen. Yeah, in front of the ball return. Exactly. 27 to 8. He's, he's well, remember what I said earlier? He hasn't won a show that he hasn't shot 300 on. Uh, well, okay, front five. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we talked about that earlier, too. I said, you know, you, you haven't shot 300 a day. So, I know. <laughs> I'm saving it. Yeah. He's he, This guy's brutal. Well, and I tell you what, for all us bowling fans, we're we're so happy to see JJ out here now. 
um, bowling these tour stops because you know we've <laughs> he's gonna I make mean, everybody well, go you, home you guys keep competing are happy but you know <laughs> we've always wondered what if john bowling what if john well, now we're finding out what happens john's bowling and guess what he's really good and it, it's awesome to see this is like clockwork you got the, i mean he's, he's like a surgeon yeah you're, right. you're you're halfway to your 300 <laughs> And Ryan's sticking with, I mean, at this point, don't you have to change? Just yeah, I mean, he's seen, you know, it'd be interesting, and I'm sure you'll talk to him after, just to maybe kind of pick his brain. What, what were you seeing that weren't that we're not seeing back here? All right, there's a reason he's sticking to this, and I'd be curious to understand his thought process, because really the only good shot we saw was the one that he really got a handful of that struck earlier. Exactly. Other than that, they've just been, you know, just coming up weak. But again, look, and I don't look at that ball through the pins. Yeah. Uh, it's not. It's not. Uh, and I don't think he really liked that one. Yeah, wa watch where this ball leaves the pin deck. You see it hit the pocket, deflected, deflect. hit the right yeah. side of the five, and it was just kind of going backwards. I see how Schaefer's got the troublemaker still on, on lane 11, which has been pretty solid for him. Oh, gets the 10 out. I just got through talking to Jeff Johnson, who talked to Ryan Schaefer about switching balls, and he thought he had a better chance of manipulating his wrist to get the ball to go through the pins the right way. And Jeff suggested he might want to change, and he goes, that's in the back of my mind, but he hasn't done it yet. Well, you need to maybe bring it to the front of your mind, and oh, my goodness. John never gets really excited about anything, does he? No. No, no, he's very The methodical. most emotion I've seen out of him is when he won the Masters and he was choked up. He couldn't hardly say anything. So 235 is the maximum score now for Ryan Schaefer. 279 for John Janowitz. Yeah, and if he stays clean, he's in the 240s. So Ryan's going to need he's he's going to have to strike out and get, and get some help. That's that's where that's where it's at right now. If he wants to bowl for a title here um, on this on this tour today here in Hammond. That was inside. I think that's that a Black Widow. Just watching yeah. the ball motion, I think that's a Black Widow. And that never got to eight. That was like 12 down lane. So he's already made an adjustment. He sees something. I shouldn't say John Janowitz doesn't get excited. He does. But it's only about dessert because he posts every picture on the Facebook that he's got some big dessert in front of him. Yeah. It was... Okay, how does he say so skinny though? What eating all that junk he eats? That's not I, fair. <laughs> yeah, look, look at us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I drive by the bakery and gain ten pounds. Out to lunch. Yeah, he lost that one. You can see he's shaking his hand. I kind of lost that one off his hand. I think Ryan sometimes has some hand pain, and you know, it, it, it might affect him right at the point of release. That's what causes him to miss. But this match is all but over. So the next match, you're going to have Haggett and John Janowitz playing the same part of the lane. Uh, <laughs> they're both yeah, playing the same yeah, arrow. They're both going yeah, to be playing fifth arrow. <laughs> what a great shot there by Ryan Schaefer. At least he's having some fun with the crowd. Well, he knows what's happening, so 
Unfortunately, at this point, you're just kind of going through the motions. Well, we talk well, about taking positive way, you know, what, like for Glenn Morgan Smith and, and for Ryan Schaefer, hey, he, he beat Couch on a show, right? There, there's a plus. First time he's done that, so uh, yeah. build, build, build on that. Uh, but I'd like, I'd love to see Ryan win a title out here. But like every tour, it, it's not easy. I mean, look, this week Parker's not here. How good was the left side? Oh my Parker goodness, Parker wasn't here. Well, another right. a guy that's been bowling great too is Gary Ray. Uh, yeah, why wasn't he here? He's been going to chiropractor and, oh, okay. and working a little bit on his back and stuff. But, you know, those two guys here, it, I think it would have been brutal. Actually, Parker's not going to be at the World Series either next week because he's still busy with, with yeah. the kids at Junior Gold. So right. There's four titles <laughs> up for grabs, and Parker's not going to make a run at him. We got 190 entries at the World Series. Awesome. Fantastic. You know, just like I was saying, we were all waiting to see J.J. come out here and bowl some tour stops. Uh, the World Series for the seniors is something we've been talking about for how long, and now it's actually going to happen. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be there tomorrow. I know you'll be there tomorrow. We're going to start getting set up at Jack 60 and to have it at a Dave Small Center and the one in Jack's and the work he's done on there. And it's, it's one of the perfect venues to do it. Oh, he's done so much work on that place. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think we should start introducing his banker during our step ladders because he's, <laughs> he's the real hero. <laughs> And some of these centers for Dave Small. Well, that was uh, almost six there. I think he's just trying a little, little something here, a little something there. Because, again, remember, he doesn't get any practice shots before the final. So now, I mean, you know, he gets a couple freebies essentially. But, you know, I I don't think he stiffens up. I mean, he's in great shape. So a few minutes off is not going to bother him at all, I don't believe. He's he's getting over there by the capping. <laughs> Come on, one shot, seventh arrow. Let's see it. That was way oh. steeper. Is that a real way steeper? Yeah. yeah, yeah, much more steep. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was experimenting. What do you think? 100%. Yeah, I think that's what Ryan said. Get, you could have tried that earlier. <laughs> so what's that, 240? 247? 247. I would like to see Ryan throw the other ball on the right lane right now. Well, it's, it's, you know it's going to strike. No, it's it's 10 frame or fill ball. Um, yeah, it would, just, it would just drive you crazy now, though. You strike out with it. That's okay. I just want to see. <laughs> Humor me. Throw the other ball. Yeah, of course he's going to strike now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I get to spend some extra time with Ryan. We were in Delaware. Uh, Dave Lamont and I did those two Delaware regionals last week, a doubles and a singles, and Ryan was there. It's always fun just to... Just, Chat and passing because, like we said, his sense of humor is, is second to none. <laughs> Probably a lot uh, misunderstood quite a bit out here, you know, on these tours. Uh, but you know, he's he's a bulldog. And well, he's, he's got a ton of heck knowledge. Heck of a player. Yeah. Well, whatever adjustment he made <clears throat> could have happened a little bit sooner. Well, I guess I will never get to see the other ball go down the lane. Wait a minute. No. Oh. 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 <laughs> yes, I will. No, th this one's just for you, Tom. Just for you. I just want to see what's going to happen. Well, I did the same thing. Yeah, I did. Yeah. All right, 210. Another great tournament for Ryan. Just comes up a little short. But now we're going to have this is going to be an someone interesting. going for their first title of Michael Haggett, who just dominated this Thursday in this build against John Janowitz, who is just coming off a Masters win, dominating this tour so far. Yes, he's uh, just turning fifty. He wins two regionals, wins the Masters, 
is whacking the living daylights out of him. And this is Michael Haggett. And this will be his third show that he's made. But this is the first time he's been a tournament leader and bowling for the title. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, I, I've known Michael for a long time, probably, you know, a, a decade. You know, we played golf together. You know, we've had dinner. Uh, he, man, he loves to bowl. His last couple of years out here, you know, he, he's got five PBA 50 regionals now. You say this is his third show. Um, retired Air Force, 26 years. Um, you know, still does a little bit of side work, you know, when he's out here on the road. But he's dedicated to bowling these last couple of years, and it shows. He the the results just, are paying off. He must have just picked up the planes because he wasn't fitting in any cockpit. <laughs> no, no, no. He, was, he wasn't. I don't think he was a pilot. No, no not at all. Um, so, you know, when you, when, you, and when, you, when you talk about what does a win mean to different people, again, for, for Haggett, it, it would just be that, uh, that the confirmation, look, all right, I belong. I know I belong here, right? He's done. He's been on shows. The guys treat him great out here. But having that banner hanging up when you walk into center. That's, uh, that's always the nice thing. Yeah. You know, it makes no difference what level you are. I don't care if you're a junior bowler and JTBAs or whatever, and they have banners. Anytime you walk into a bowling center, whatever level it is, and your name's hanging up on the wall, it makes you feel pretty good. Absolutely. And, and we've seen two players today um, put in a lot of hard work the last couple of years with Glenn Smith and Mike Haggett, and they both make the show. So. The hard work is paying off. Now he just got to turn it into to a banner. Uh, but John Janowitz is going to have something to say about it. Well, you know, Michael is playing right around 12, 10, it looks like right now, with an ocean vibe. And he, J.J.'s playing the same spot. <laughs> They're crossing paths. Well, there's no way you're going to get that ball out of Michael's hand the way that he bowled with it today. There's oh, no. no chance that he's not throwing that ball here. Um, I mean, he, he, he averaged over 270 this morning in our five-game advances round uh, with a 300 uh, in game number one, another 300 in match play, and averaged, you know, over 260 in match play as well. So he's averaging almost 270 uh, for, what, three, 11 games today. That ball ain't coming out of his hands. I think he only threw the purple maybe a game or three-quarters of a game. He, he, I th- he threw it about three-quarters of one game and then switched. But – and if you watch him warming up in his swing, I mean, he's just dead pure through the bottom of it, going through it, just n- nothing fancy, but he strikes a lot. And he's not covering a lot of boards. He's kind of like a, a Glenn Smith on the left side. He's just going to yeah. be kind of down and in. He's firm with it. You know, and, and we talked earlier, My- Michael's a big guy, right? I mean, he, he's he's good 6'4", six, 6'4 four, six, yeah, four and, and a half, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, in his fifties, so that knee bend goes away. So there's some disadvantages a little bit. Um, you know, being taller, right? You got to really get down a little deeper to get that leverage. Well, and we, he's not a, a Steve Cook that had a real deep knee bend back right. when, you know, S- Steve Cook what was six, 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 seven, and oh, had yeah. one yeah, of the six, deepest seven. knee bends yeah. out here. Yeah, I met Steve Cook out at his, at his, at his warehouse a couple of years ago at Steve Cook Bowling Supply, and he was sitting down when I met him. And then a couple months later, he stood up, and I turned around and said, like, whoa, <laughs> hello there. <laughs> hello there, Mr. Cook. <laughs> How's the air up there? Yeah, when he, he only came out on the senior tour for just a short stint, one couple stops, and he won when he came out. And he just – the bowling ball in his hand looked like a grapefruit. I <laughs> mean, he just is amazing. He switch balls? He's doing well, I think they're trying something. They're, they're, they're trying something here. I'm not sure what they're trying, but let's see. He's just maybe just to get a look. That's not a purple ball either. Ryan just come up and he's, he's kind of telling Tom what he was thinking just to give us the info. We appreciate that, Ryan. I know you got the load on, and so what, what was uh, – why, why didn't he want to switch? It sounded yeah. like he thought about it. But. Yeah, Ryan Shaver just came up and wanted to let us know why he didn't switch because obviously people were talking about it, and he knew that if he could move left and just get around it more, the ball would shape and do what he wanted to. He's, 
but he missed it a couple times. Yeah, yeah. the one time he did get around, it looked great. Right. And then uh, he goes, the reason I didn't switch to the other ball, and he did it in the fill, he goes, I knew it was going to hit just like it did in the fill shot. So, I, like I said earlier in the matches, that the pros, the greats out here, uh, you know, like he's made 56 shows, they see things totally different mm -hmm. than we do. And we can only see what we see on the monitor. We don't know how they think. And, and it's always nice to get an insight. Oh, yeah, it was great. He come up here and shared that with us. So, right. Because, yeah. you know, we're learning we're like the players, and, you know, every, every event. And you got to keep learning every event if you want to if you want to be relevant out here, whether it's in the booth or on the lanes, right? We we, we, we all strive to get better every week, and hopefully uh, hopefully we do. Well, this is going to be an interesting match because uh, it obviously Michael Haggett, like you said, has had an absolutely phenomenal day on the lanes. I'm not sure what ball they're trying. I don't like it. I think it's just just to, <laughs> just to, just to see, right? Just to see what it does. Well, yeah. Michael Haggett led this tournament through 19 <coughs> games of all of the qualifying rounds. 19 games, he was determined. So we got 10 frames to a new title. Undefeated through the match play Either JJ's second or Michael's first. Uh, it's, man, it's still a tough one to call. I mean, again, odds on favorite. You, you, you got to go with JJ just for that, pure experience. I mean, he's, he's a USBC the, Hall of Famer. He, he just he just wins. The, the poll said JJ was going to win. Uh, we'll see how that goes. If I had to put five dollars on one of the two guys, I don't know. I, I don't know who I could pick, honestly, and at this point, because the Michael's Bowl is just so freaking good today. And it's not like you know he averaged 240, 250. He's averaging almost 270, 270. Right? I mean, that's just it's that's on another level. Yeah, yeah. That's not even a number that most people even think about. You know, you hit that number once in a while in a game, not for the whole darn day. I mean, we were giving him a hard time with his one, in one of his games in the matches. Like, he didn't strike until frame four. It's like, well, is he okay? Is he getting sick? What's going on? <laughs> well, then he struck out. So. <sighs> is that a replay? <laughs> <laughs> Did this match start already? <laughs> JJ just makes that look so stinking easy. So, do you think Michael tried to take him out of his rhythm? I hope so. I mean, you, you have to, right? You have to. There's, there's. Uh, He's sticking there, with the blue no ball. Can't. Yeah, no surprise. Ocean vibe. Just a big, strong guy going through the shot. Michael doesn't do anything fancy, but he repeats. And that's the biggest thing out here, repeating shots. Yeah. If you can repeat, at least you, you can get some kind of read off the lane. Okay. One, one thing all these guys have done, and we talk about it a lot on the show, is they all post shots. And I, I just think that's one of the biggest keys there is to bowling, being able to stay solid at the line. You know, Janowitz has bowled for 48 years, and he's only 50. So. Where did you get that stat at? <laughs> From John. Started at two. There's your oh. seventh arrow. <laughs> Six and a half. Well, he hasn't stood on the left side of the ball return yet, which is a wait possibility. Till frame, wait till frame four. Yeah, so that was... For people watching home, like 32 but on again, the lane. Look, he's still sliding about in the same spot, but still getting it, been able to get it steeper, you right. know, farther left off his hand. But he's he's finishing in the same spot he was earlier, you know, just just outside the left gutter there. So that just adjusting his shoulders. I, well, I think that's to get the angle through the front part of the lane, and he, yes, adjusting his shoulders to get through there. Yeah, you see him really opening up. It's set up there. So. Thank you. 
Oh. That was. Hall of Fame carry. <laughs> wow. That was way farther right down lane. That's a big break to this. Look at how yeah, late this temp in is. How? Yeah, they, I didn't even think that was going to go over. That was like 3-4 down lane, and it was farther down lane. You don't have that in your game, Tom? Uh, no. Yeah. Nope, nope. Pretty sure I don't. Yeah, maybe practice it tomorrow before a <laughs> World Series starts. <laughs> then it'll be 189 <laughs> players in the World Series if yeah, you try that. I was going to say, I, I, I did want to try to finish the rest of this tour. Getting a shoulder replacement September 20th. Right shoulder. Maybe I'll have a follow through then. <laughs> Maybe. No. No, 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 no chance? No chance, no. <laughs> okay. Please silence all cell phones before the movie starts. <laughs> what? Somebody's <laughs> cell phone just went off? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, it was the siren, you know, the, the, the siren that ringer. So. Oh, my God. We had that happen a couple years ago uh, on a show. Yeah. What so, was that? Somebody it happened a couple times in that show. Somebody's cell phone. person went didn't off. learn the first time, didn't shut off, got you another know, call. I, I almost said, I wonder if John Weber told everybody to shut off their cell phones because I didn't hear that announcement. Well, let's blame John. He's got to let that go if that yeah. that messed with him. Yeah, well, I mean, it, you know, he backed out, goes through his routine again. But yeah, you, it's you got to be thinking about it a little bit. It's just, it's just frustrating, right? Fancy in the chat said Bob Learn Jr. had it happen. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was. I, was, I, don't, I, I remember it happening. I think I do remember it being Bob. I don't remember where we were at. Maybe the villages, because there's so many people there. It didn't seem like it was the villages, but if I could ask John Weber, he might remember. But I doubt it. <laughs> He's getting old too. <laughs> <laughs> he can't find his phone half the time. But I guarantee he asked. He asked Linda, fifteen times a day. Where's my phone? Where's my glasses? They're on your head, Jen. Oh, solid eight. He looks like he's crossing like 12 or 13, taking it out to eight. That's just frustrating there as well. So you, you, know, so you have the, the phone go off, you back off, so and now did, you leave an eight pin. Did that get into his head? And we were four frames in, did you know, like I said, he's a tough one to read. He's got a very, a very uh, kind of calm demeanor. Doesn't show a lot of emotions. Just, you know, I'm not sure. champions yep. do they get up and they take advantage of that and just he did. throw 10 back well you know john's bold all over the world I and mean, he does lanes he understands how lanes break down you know and <laughs> in some ways it's like it's not even fair because he's got way more knowledge about what's going on with that lane i think than the average bear you know he's well, still he, got to read ball motion he's still got to execute shots but at least he's got some kind of idea of what might happen. And, and one of his greatest skills, besides bowling, because he's a fantastic bowler, again, 10-time Team USA, uh, and wins a lot, you know, just crushes the state of Florida where he lives. But when, you know, he, he, he works for Kegel, does a lot of lane lane maintenance and, and oil and all over the world for big events, but he also does a lot of pattern design. And you can call, John. I've done this before. Does he get the double? Oh, goal? okay. So we got a we got a little ball we, game going on here. We got a match going on now. So you can call John yeah. and say, "Look, I'm going to have a tournament. This is, you know, it's going, you know, a lot of house bowlers, whatever. I need a pattern, and I want the cut to be around plus 30, 35. And he can do it. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, tell me what lane surface you're on. What kind of machine you got? What kind of oil you got? All right, give me a minute. Uh, it, every time, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Oh, he's the guy that can make this as well because he gets the ball to go right to left so good. And he did make yeah. it. Yeah. Again, not, not surprised yeah. Not surprised at all. Yeah. So you that's, practice that's that John shot January, every day, right? Ladies and gentlemen. Jesus. <laughs> Criminy. All right, so now yep. you're Haggard. You're thinking, oh, all right, two for eight, ten. I got a chance now. And, got, then, and then that happens. Look like, at that. You know. I mean, th that couldn't have been any more textbook yeah. if you went down there and done it by hand. Unbelievable. So that was not a split in the third frame. It was it was just a seven pin. The ten fell late, but it does show a split conversion there. So it's double seven pin strike. Picks up a two four eight ten. And, and the big thing is he didn't lose count with that six count because he was on a right. strike. So and then now Haggett, he, he Haggett just leaves pin, the seven pin. I mean, he's throwing a couple good shots and and he's. But we still have a two striking. pin game. He we picks do. us up. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, only two pins apart. But mentally right now, J.J.'s in a better place, you know. Michael has worked on his game so hard. He's become a great spare shooter. I, mean, I remember when he finally kind of first came out and Seven's pins were kind of his nemesis, and he is he don't miss anything anymore. Well, to be fair, he didn't shoot many spares today. Well, when you're averaging 270, you don't shoot many spares. <laughs> what, one you know, in a you, game? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe two. What was that? Hey, he is not having any luck whatsoever. No. What the heck was that? There's something in the snack bar. I, I don't know. But yeah. hey, he laughed it <laughs> off. But you get now you got to be thinking: Is there going to be a noise in my approach? Right? It's happened twice. Yeah, that's kind of a crowd favorite. There, he, he yeah. bounced back through that, yeah. and that, that's pretty impressive. And, and you can hear the crowd showing their appreciation for that shot. So yeah. again, this crowd has been fantastic. But we have a real good match going on here. The two pin match. Spares up. Oh my that's double bounced. He gave that one the business too. That one with authority there. He got well look at he gets a mitt full of this shot. His wrist is so firm. Yeah, he threw that twice. that ball landed literally fourteen feet out, almost hit the arrow. Can you throw a ball 14 feet? Yeah, but it doesn't hook. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it doesn't hook. It goes straight. <laughs> it's not often that our bowler is right in front of our camera angle because he's playing so deep on the lane. Oh, I like this. We're, we're tight in over shoulder. You can see how he opens his shoulders up, and this is a great look at what he's doing. And look at how steep that ball goes down the lane. That one doesn't quite come back. I guarantee you the numbers and physics are going through his head right now. Remember, he 2 4 8 10 his last shot, so he made a move, and that one just comes up for kind of a week seven. So for the first time in the game, Michael Haggett can take the lead. Yep, sure can. Max score for John Jane was 239, Michael Haggett 257. This is a huge shot for Michael so he can Actually, put a little pressure back on John and give him a little bit of breathing room. Uh, 
It looked that like looked like, like it was inside. It or something. Yeah. I, well, you heard me kind of grunt there. That looked like it was right of target off of his hand, the angle that I've got here on the monitor. Well, now, this is where the adrenaline gets going again. There's only a couple frames left. Yeah. All day sucker right there. So we still are back to a two pin match. Jay's up two. Has he missed on the list left lane? Yeah, he's uh, seven and eight pin in this lane. Oh, a little love tap there to uh, take out that know, ten. He might have had one coming. Might have had a little, a little, little fortunate carry coming his way. That was fifteen to nine. Looked like the head pin kind of like airborne and took that out. So JJ hit like four or five board at what, 14, 15 feet down the lane, his last shot on this one. Here on lane 12. Uh, that was a little uh -oh. farther right. As far as. It's like he was track. Yeah, that looked more like, I don't know, 32 down there. Yeah, Maybe. it was like right on 6 there. there. Yeah, that was definitely right of the last shot. So J.J. needs to strike here, which puts pressure on Mike to actually finish it out. So do you like Michael making the choice to finish first? I mean, he had choice. He was high qualifier. He had the option. And he said, look, I want to finish first. And you got to yeah. beat me. I, I think that's a good a good move. Thing I don't like, JJ is striking like crazy on the right lane. That's what he gets to end on. Right. This is a big one because these last two shots on this lane have been not so good. Well, and, and maybe that's why another reason that we went into Haggett choosing that is that he does force J.J. to finish on the right lane where he's got to get in front of the ball return. Yeah, he's good at doing it, it's not, but it's just a little bit tougher to do that, right? Right. I mean, Michael can put this all to bed. He can. He's got a chance to get up and win it. All right, so 219 is a max score for John Janet. So 220 is a magic number for Michael Haggett to win his first title here. PBA 50 South Shore Classic. Can he do it? Well, this one is huge. This could make him breathe a little easier going into the 10th. Well, two, two strikes here, and he wins. That's, that's all there is to it. Strike in the ninth, first one in the 10th, and he's in the 220s. There's the first one. That was a pure shot. It looked like he got that a little farther left down lane, but he just come trucking back. Yeah, he, he got he got it. Got he got all head. of that nice. one. Yeah. Absolutely all of that. Strike here, and you win your first title. Did he hear something? Or he just lost focus? I don't know. I, di I didn't. 
I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. He, Nobody's he, looking he, like something he happened He looked back either, over so. in the corner. I don't, I I don't, don't know. know what's going on. Maybe that's yeah, a... Uh, He's just trying to get a little more air time, so mugging the camera. <sighs> no, that's not what he did. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. This could be game, set, match. Oh, that's It's in. 10 back. Oh. It's 10 back. We have a first-time winner here at Olympia Lanes it's again, back-to-back -back years. See, that was inside. He yeah. hit like 15, 16. Yeah, seven count here is 221. He needs 220. A little victory lap here. Just make a quality shot. Yeah. Put it to bed. Is it? It is. His first title. Congratulations, Michael Haggard. He, he well deserved today, though, the, the way well, he ramboed yeah. the, the field, he, averaging he, 270 he, for the he, day. He, he dominated Thursday here uh, at Olympia Lanes here in Hammond and 100% uh, earned and deserved yeah. this win. So. Yeah. Well, I wonder if his banner is going to be blue because when he drilled up that blue ball, Things, things changed. That's why, well, but we're friends because he's a Michigan fan. So it could be amazing blue on that banner. He lives in Ohio, but he's a Michigan fan. Yeah. 237. There's a lot of happy people in this building. Here's that uh, final shot again one more time. That awesome was, stuff. Awesome it, stuff. The fact that twice he had to back off because of noises and everything else, that was just absolutely incredible. Well, I get to go interview a, a new champ here. So okay. we'll get down there as J.J. finishes up. And then we'll come back and recap, uh, recap the day. And J.J.'s got... Uh, couple more shots and it's uh, going to be all she wrote. Michael Haggett winning his first PBA title here in Hammond, Indiana in Olympia Lanes. It happened last year. It's a repeat of last year. John Burkett won his first title here. Unfortunately, John's got a hurt wrist and uh, he did compete but just didn't have the success this year as he had last year. But what a great show. Michael Haggett is going to... <laughs> They're handing tissues out there already. <laughs> Sorry. John Janowitz, his final shot, <laughs> launching it. Clear to sixth arrow. Three in the pit. Just that one in the ninth didn't carry, left the 10 pin. But what a great year John Janowitz is having. Craig Elliott is going to be on the lanes with Michael Haggett with the interview for here at Bowl TV. Craig Elliott is going to do a quick interview with the winner of this event, and we are going to bring out Mike Cozy and Miss Gooden there from South Shore Sports, and they will do the check and trophy presentation. Stick around. It will be a good interview and check and trophy presentation with Cozy and Gooden. Thank you. Well, no pressure saying it's going to be a good interview. i got to figure this out now. <laughs> Come on back here a little bit. So I've been waiting to do this for a while. We've known Mike for several years. Congratulations, Michael Haggett. 2023 South Shore Classic Champion. Back-to-back -back years, we've had first-time winners here in this building. 